بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا رحم الرحمن الحمد لله بها توفيق to continue our study of Zad al-Salik by the late Mullah Muhsin the Faith Kashani. You remember after introducing the author and the book, we started with a comparison he made between a physical journey and a spiritual journey. And then he said that in the spiritual journey we have origin, we have destination, we have distance, we have uh, provision, like physical journey. And then he said stations of this uh, spiritual journey are praised and virtuous traits of character. Now he start with the first station. He says the first station is yaqza, awakeness. Before yaqza there is no journey. As I said, some people say this is the first station, some say this is a starting point. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a famous hadith said, anna sunniyamun Hatta the matun tabahu. People are asleep. This is general. There are exceptions, but generally speaking, people are asleep. When they die, they become alert. Like someone who is uh, waiting for the flight, but gets busy in the airport. And then all of a sudden looks and finds on the screen that his flight has departed. So it's too late. When we die, we all become alert, but it's too late. So he says, Manzela Aval Yakze asked Ke Ogohist. Yakze means awakeness, so a matter of awareness. You become awake means you become aware, you become conscious and alert. Or it's better to akhir in Arabic. Akhir means the last. Manzil akhir tawheed ast. The last station is tawheed. Full-fledged tawheed. You remember in uh, previous books like Lubbul Lubab and Risalatul Wilayah, we said that for Mutakallameen, for theologians, first we have Tawheed Zati, then Tawheed Sifati, then Tawheed Af'ali. But for Urafa, they have different terminology. First is Tawheed Af'ali, then Tawheed Sifati, then Tawheed Zati. And Orafa by Tawheed Af'ali mean to find every action and action of God. By Tawheed Sifati you find that every Alim is God. There is no other Alim. And then the only one who really exists independently and others are just dependent on him. They don't exist separately is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It is Tawheed Zati. So that Tawheed is when we uh, make our journey towards uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we reach Fana and Baqa. We finish and then in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we endure. So Manzala Akhir Tawheed Ast. که مقصد اقصاست 
as in Safa. This is the last destination in this journey. We have different uh, stations for different uh, stages, but the last one is Tawheed. And he says, Tafsil in Manazel wa Darajat an dar Kitab Manazel al-Sa'irin he says if you want more detailed discussion about these uh, stations and uh, you know ranks you can find it in Manazil al-Sa'irin by Khaj Abdullah Ansari uh, stations of the wayfarers he doesn't mention those details either because this is a brief book or because those details are not necessarily all uh, possible to argue from the Quran and Sunnah. You know, even uh, those who write on practical Irfan, they may have different opinions about the number of stations. <coughs> are there 50? Are there more? And then about the order of those stations, sometimes there are differences because m many of it is based on their experience and their own uh, judgment and reasoning. Some of them we can argue from the Quran and Hadith, but some of it is through experience of the person. Uh, in two months of Ramadan, uh, many years ago, in Stanmore, uh, we had lectures on stations of the wayfarers. Uh, as audio, they are available if someone is interested. Uh, there are many commentaries on Manazul So it's a respected book, it's a scholarly uh, book, but it's not, you know, Hujja in the sense that you can say, Wallahi, all these 50 stations are you know, correct and all come in this order. We can benefit from that. So, he doesn't go into details. He says the first is awakeness, the last is Tawheed, and then there are in between many stations. How can we move towards the destination? How can we make this journey? This is very important because we need to progress. و مسیر این منازل به مجاهده و ریاضت نفس به حمل اعبای تکالیف شرعیه از فرائز و سنن و آداب و مراقبه و محاسبه نفس آنن فآنن و لحظتن فلحظتن و هموم را هم واحد گردانیدن و منقطع شده به حق سبحانه و تعالی و تبتل الیه تبتیلا و الذین جاهدو فینا لنهدینهم سبولنا It's two lines Only two lines What I read now But very important Very deep a summary of everything that we have to do. Our journey can be summarized in what he says in two lines. This journey is a matter of mujahada wa riyazat nafs. You must make efforts and you must train your soul so that your soul is prepared to carry the difficulty of religious obligations. So there is no uh, spirituality, there is no religiosity. If you want to do whatever you like, you say, I want to enjoy myself. I want to act as I desire. So then don't expect religion or spirituality. Unfortunately, sometimes people look for spirituality, but at the same time, they don't want to do anything. 
people they want to be religious but they don't want to do anything then they try to dilute religion and spirituality and make it something very relaxed very flexible no we need mujahide va riyazat nafs we need to make efforts we need to train our nafs for undertaking difficulties and difficult tasks uh, if you remember in self development we have a discussion about self control and then about self purification so you have to control yourself and then you have to purify yourself quran says amma man khafa maqam rabbihi wa naha nafsa an al hawa fa inna al jannata hiya al ma'wa naha nafsa an al hawa to refrain the soul from her whims her lower desires this is nah your nafs is control of nafs self control and also tazkiyat on nafs after that so how we are going to this this mujahada and riyazat nafs islamically we are not going to do some of the things that some uh, for example uh, eastern uh, spiritualities suggest like i don't know lying down on a bed which is just covered with the sharp nails for example or for example keeping your hand without any movement for days sometimes they say you know a bird may come and lay eggs until these uh, you know become you know young birds you have to stay like this not to eat except very little not to drink no we are not suggesting this kind of riyazat our riyazat our mujahada are listed here first fara is we have to do wajibat and refrain from haram and then sunan wa adab to do mustahabbat to bring those things which are islamically Uh, considered as uh, right manners even if they are not wajib for example adab of ta'allum ta'allim adab of uh, eating adab of drinking adab of safar adab of tijara as much as possible try to do it in islamic way try to do it like rasulullah like ahlul bayt alayhi wasallam used to do and muraqaba wa muhasaba nafs self monitoring and self assessment this is very important wajibat are easy to learn and to do mustahabbat again easy to learn and do but then all the time continuously you have to monitor yourself to make sure you don't fail to do any wajib you don't miss any must, um, har- uh, you don't uh, uh, miss any wajib or mustahab and don't commit any haram plus check your intention this needs constant monitoring why i am doing this why i'm not doing this why i'm going to this place why i'm not going to that place all these things on and for on and moment by moment this muraqaba and muhasaba nafs are necessary and then humum ra hum wahid gardanida amir al munir salam says rahimallahu ra'an ja'ala hammahu hamman wahida we may have divided attention divided concern divided interests i want to please this and that i want to achieve this and that make it one to please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala under him you can do other things but just focus on pleasing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
هموم را هم واحد گردانیدن و منقطع شدن به حق detach yourself from anything other than Allah and attach yourself to Allah سبحانه وتعالى انقطاع الى الله الهی حبلی کمال لنقطاع الیک از بیافین مناجات شعبانی این دو قرآن الله سبحانه و تبتل الیه تبتیلا means انقطع الى ربك detach yourself from other things and attach yourself to your Lord والذین جاهدو فینا لنهدینهم سبولنا in Surah An-Kabood verse 69 Allah says those who really struggle on our way we will certainly show them our path so our journey is a matter of being determined to act to make efforts for performing wajibat for observing mustahabbat and adab refraining from haram and then self-monitoring, self-assessment, moment after moment, and making all our attention fixed around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the whole story. And this is the journey towards Tawheed. What is the provision for this journey? وزاد راه این سفر تقواست The provision for this journey is تقوی This is what Quran very clearly says in Surah Baqarah verse 282 وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ تَقْوَى تَزَوَّدُوا means take your provision فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ تَقْوَى Truly, the best provision is taqwa. Nothing like taqwa can help us and benefit us in this journey. And nothing like lacking taqwa can bring problems and get us stuck in this journey. What is taqwa? He says taqwa means قیام نمودن به آنچه امر فرموده است و پرهیز کردن از آنچه نهی از آن کرده to do what Allah has asked to do to avoid what Allah has asked you to avoid if Allah finds us present where he wants us to be present and once, uh, when finds us absent when, where he wants us to be uh, absent that is taqwa then if you have taqwa, if you have this provision, you will be given also something extra. It's not just provision. This also qualify you to receive light. As ruye basirat ta dil benur shar و سیقل تکالیف آن مستعد فیضان معرفت شود از حق تعالی So if you do what Allah wants you to do and avoid what Allah wants you to avoid with understanding then your heart will be enlightened with the light of شرعه with the light of religion and with the polishing that these divine commands will make your heart becomes enlightened and would be able to receive the grace of ma'rifa ma'rifa will overflow from your heart you know faith himself is called faith and fayadhan is you know, the, from the same root means when something is overflowing if you have a uh, for example pool and water is overflowing it's called fayadhan this is fila amr 
و یعلمکم الله have taqwa and Allah will teach you among different things taqwa would lead to ma'rifah to knowledge which is not the knowledge through reading and studying it's a special knowledge it's a knowledge given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the same way that a physical journey needs your bother your body to get energy you need to energize and empower your body from the provision for example you take food when you become tired when you run out of energy you eat and you gain energy okay without this you cannot keep moving maybe a few hours maybe a few days but then finally without eating and drinking you stop then he says in similar way in a spiritual journey we need taqwa wa taharat shar'iyya zahiran wa batinan we need religious purity in a ritual way external way and also spiritually so ritual tahara purity is not to need ghusl and not to need you know washing from najasa so if i don't have hadas asghar and akbar and najasa as we say in fiqh means i don't need to do ghusl i don't need to make wudu i don't need to wash so i am in a condition that can say my salat then i have taharat zahiri but also if my heart is clean there is no impurity in my heart then i am spiritually also clean so taqwa and purity physically and spiritually prepare our spirit for journey give energy and power to our spirit for journey of course our true aqaid our knowledge our ma'rifa which come after taqwa also help us so taqwa brings those things as well the ex- he, then he makes an example he says suppose someone dar shab tar in a dark night has a light a lantern for example in his hand and with the light of this lantern finds his way and walks har yek gam ke barm dad every step that he takes one piece of the road will be known to him qat ay az an ra roshan shavad so i can just see f- maybe few meters but when i go forward i can see again few more meters little by little i can reach end of this journey but if you say i don't move unless i see the whole you know road the whole route then you get a stuck he says on the dan be manzale ma'rifat ast you see the next few steps this is your ma'rif this is your knowledge but when you go few steps forward this is amal wa taqwa this is your action and your taqwa which leads to more knowledge then you can see more steps man amila bima alim awrathahu allah ilm ma lam ya'lam hadith says of course maybe you have this as different wording but this is the idea in the hadith that if you act whoever acts upon what he knows allah would give him knowledge of what he doesn't know like if you go these few steps that you see then inshallah you will see the next few steps that you don't see it and see them now so if you act upon your knowledge you will be given knowledge of things that you don't know العلم يهتف بالعمل فان اجابه 
وارتحل فإن هير جزائز دليت الميس فإن أجابه فبها ونعمة أو فإن أجابه فإت ريمينز بات وإلا ميس إف دازنت دو أجابة ارتحل What does it mean? Ilm yahtafu bil amal means knowledge always acts as like hatef is a telephone they call hatef or someone who makes neda a call it's called hatef. Ilm always makes a call for what? For practice. Means ilm requires practice, invites practice. If you have been given knowledge, make sure that you act upon it. Then, inshallah, your knowledge remains and will lead to more knowledge. But if you have knowledge and you ignore your knowledge, you don't act upon your knowledge, then that knowledge will go away. لا يقبل عملا or لا يقبل الله عملا إلا بمعرفة ولا معرفة إلا بعمل No action would be accepted without معرفة معرفة is a condition If someone do, uh, does things without understanding without knowing what he's doing <laughs> this is not accepted But معرفة also would not be accepted without عمل without action إنما يتقبل الله من المتقين Allah would accept only from those who have تقوى فمن عرف دلته المعرفة على الأمر. So whoever has معرفة, this معرفة would lead him and guide him to action. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَعْمَلْ So if someone doesn't have عمل, doesn't act, فَلَا مَعْرِفَةَ لَا This معرفة is not there. Either not there at all or it's useless. رُبَّ عَالِمًا قَتَلَهُ جَهْلُهُ وَعِلْمُهُ مَعَهُ لَا يَنْفَعُ There are many ulama. Many, not majority, many. Many can be 10 person, 20 person. There are many alims, many scholars, that their ignorance has destroyed them. Rabba alim and qatalahu jahlu. You may say, alim, jahl, how they can be together. It explains, says, ilmuhu ma'ahu la yanfa'u. His knowledge is with him, but doesn't benefit him. If you have knowledge and doesn't benefit you, you are a jahil. means you didn't act according to your knowledge. Like if I have car, but I don't use it, I walk. So it's like someone who doesn't have car. Suppose, for example, there is an accident. I need to take quickly someone to hospital. I have car, I should take with the... Uh, uh, the car, this person to the hospital, but I don't use the car. So I'm like someone who doesn't have car. If you don't use it, actually you are more responsible. Then it says, "Allah in al iman ba'dhum and ba'd." Iman is. A unit and has to be taken in a holistic way. Part of Iman requires the other parts. Like human body. We have many parts in our body, many organs. But we cannot separate brain from the heart, heart from the kidney, kidney from the you know liver. We have to have them together. إن الإيمان بعضه من بعض. Part of it from the other means they are all connected. كذا عن الصادق. In this way, it has been reported from Imam Sadiq عليه السلام. فرم من عمل بما علم أو رثه الله علم ما لم يعلم up to إن الإيمان بعضه من بعض. Another similarity between physical, geographical journey and spiritual journey. Hamchenan ke dar safar suri, kasi ke rah nadanad be maksad nemi resad, 
همچنین در سفر معنوی کسی که بصیرت در عمل ندارد به مقصد نمیرسد in the same way that in formal journeys physical journeys if you don't know the path if you don't have the direction you would not reach the end in the spiritual journey also if there is no basira if there is no insight you cannot reach the destination we have this famous hadith which is available in al-kafi al-amilu ala ghayr basira kassair ala ghayr tariq لا يزيده كثرة السير إلا بعدا. The one who acts without insight, without understanding and ma'rifah, is like someone who is moving on a wrong path. Imagine you want to go to the north, but you are going towards the east or south. You are not getting nearer. Indeed, the farther you go, the farther you get from the destination the faster you go the faster you go away from destination so la yaziduhu kathratu sayr illa bu'da if you travel more it will increase your distance you are more remote from your destination In physical journey, we need rahile. We need sometimes a donkey, sometimes a horse, sometimes a camel, sometimes a car, a train, a plane, a bicycle, a motorcycle. So we need something to use for journeying. If it is short, maybe we go on feet, but if it is very far we need to take an animal or you know a means of transportation if that horse for example or camel or car has problem that cannot help me I cannot make this journey the car can break down the horse can you know become ill or die I cannot complete the journey. In the spiritual journey, your body is very important. Although it's the journey of the spirit, but body is like a horse, like a camel, like a means of transportation. You have to be careful about your body. Don't underestimate your body. We shouldn't be like people who do everything for their body. They spend money, attention, time, energy on looking after their body only. They eat, you know, and spend lots of time and energy on eating. Or I don't know, uh, the bed that they sleep, the home, the food, whatever, too much. And sometimes actually it's not he helpful, not healthy. We shouldn't be like that, that we only take care of our body, but we shouldn't neglect about the body. Therefore, you have to make your living. Tahsil ma'ash. You cannot, you know, stop eating and drinking till you die. You cannot also be burden on others. So you have to make your, uh, you know, living and have your income. And have proper food, proper drink, not too much, not too delicious, not too luxurious, but something good, something healthy. But if you want too much of ma'ash, then it becomes an obstacle. This becomes dunya which is blamed. Pas talab fuzul dar ma'ash ast az sulu. A wayfarer, like a seeker of knowledge, talibul ilm, they should try to have simple life. 
They shouldn't have miserable life, but they should have simple life, like average, or a little less than average, so that the poor people also would feel happy. دنیای مزموم که تحذیر از آن فرمودند عبارت از آن فضول است که بر صاحبش و بال است دنیا which is blamed and condemned is not nature or physical world دنیا is not this you know, tree and this you know, river and this beautiful garden and this not دنیا what is دنیا Dunya is our attachment to this physical world. Especially he wants to focus on fuzul, to looking for something extra, something more than needed, which becomes vabal, which becomes a burden. But that much of dunya which is necessary is actually something for akhira amma qadr zaruri az an dakhil umur akhirat ast va tahsilash ibadat you need something as food for yourself and children some clothes some house those things which are necessary if you try to have them and uh, arrange them it's not dunya it's akhira and this is ibadah to work for having some halal income to look after your you know real needs and family needs In the physical journey, when you are traveling, you have to be careful throughout the journey not to lose, for example, your camel, not to lose your horse or car. In the spiritual journey also you have to be careful not to start with healthy body, <laughs> then on the way you are heedless about your health about your body physical condition and then you cannot continue the journey and maybe you get stuck or maybe even you lose what you have gained so you have to look after your body you have to do justice to your body you have to give your body what it really needs but also don't let your body be free like you don't let the horse to be free and decide where to take you maybe the horse runs away or takes you to wrong direction be careful about your body and the needs of your body don't let them take your control sometimes very secretly our lifestyle changes. We start with very simple life, but little by little, then we see we have become like others. What others do, people of dunya, I am also doing, but I just do some about that, for example. Then he talks about people with whom we travel. If you remember, we said we need Rafiq Safar, Rafiq Shafiq. We need people that are considerate, moderate, kind with whom we travel. If you want to go to Mecca, for example, you want to go for Ziyara or for business, whatever, it's very difficult to go alone, especially if you want to go to a place that you have not been before, you don't know the language, you don't know anything, you need to have few people, you need to have people who are experienced, people who are acting as guide. Rafiqan in Ra 
علماء و صلحا و عباد و سالکان Those that in this journey are your friends are ulama Those who have knowledge Sulaha, righteous people Obad, worshippers Sadiqan, wayfarers These are the people that come with you Or they are already ahead And show you the way Say, you know, follow us they help each other. Imdad means to help. The Quran we have kullan numiddu haula wa haul. Chahar kasi bar aib khud zood muttali' nashavad. Amma bar aib digari zood waqif mi shavad. One of the beauties of having good friends is this. Every person has difficulty in finding out their own problems, their own bad habits, bad actions, etc., bad traits of character. But they can quickly notice these bad things in others. So if we have good relation, if we have, you know, good friends, then I can help them by seeing the problems that they have. They can help me by seeing the problems that I have. It's not that we look for problems. It's not that, you know, some people, you know, they are happy to find problems in others. No. But we notice and we actually request from each other that please give me as gift some of my problems. As Imam Sadiq salam said, the most lovable brothers of mine are those who give as gift to me my faults. Man ahda ilayya uyubi. Those who gift me my problems. Imam says so that we can learn. Pas agar chand kas ba ham besazan va yek digar ra az uyub u afat ba khabar sazan zud ra bar ishan taymi shabad. و از دزدی و حرامی ایمن میگردند so if few people get together and they can be you know very good friends and they can inform each other about problems of each other then they can make this journey faster and thieves would not attack them on the way because they are together Shaitan attacks people who are alone more easily. But those who are together, they are safer. And also, Yadullah uh, ma'al jama'ah. The hand of Allah is with group, with united groups. And if one person goes astray, Others inform him. But if you are alone, then test means it's very difficult to understand. So you keep going, going, going till you may never come back. Then we need Rahnama. We need someone to show us guide. Inshallah, we talk about this in the next session. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد. Uh, do you have time for a few questions, Chef? Sure, sure. Inshallah. So, to start, if any has uh, no direct questions you'd like to ask, the Chef, you're welcome to unmute and ask. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Um, thank you very much um, you're welcome. for the informative lesson, as always. Um, just bringing my notes. Yes. Look. Um, okay. A question I had. Uh, uh, two, two questions I had. The first one was on the first point um, about Yaqba. 
mm-hmm. um, that that we mentioned. Um, you know, being the first or you know, you know, first stage or zero stage um, of the journey. Yes. You know, the Yagoda will probably have I don't know like different levels, but how do we know whether? Because you know, sometimes we we feel that we are awake. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in reality, we are not. Mm-hmm. And sometimes maybe we feel that we are not awake, but we are awake. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what's the, you know, because like for myself, I sometimes you know you feel, you know, that that you delve into this journey and you find that you're full of deficiency, you're full of naps, you're full of, you know, you're poor uh, before Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So, you know, that itself it could be a level of that being awake but at the same time because of this feeling of insignificance it sometimes override or um, you know um, it, it takes over that um, that state that you're in so that's my first question what's what's a good assessment for that to, to determine where we are and number two that the hadith that um, um, you read as well man amala bima alam warathallahu ilma ma lam ya'lam um, which is reported and you know discussed a lot of times what what sort of teaching is this you know is it that you know that all of a sudden you you think of an idea is it that you suddenly understand something or is it a dream is it you know what, what does it mean that Allah that double law what does it mean that Allah teaches you um, and how does that how does that differ with you know, someone being smart, for example, you know, you've just read different things, all of a sudden, you you know, you got, you just get it. You know, does that mean Allah is teaching you, or maybe that's through an intermediary, mm-hmm. just an expansion of, you know, Allah teaching us something. Isn't Allah teaching us anyway, even through the books that we read, even through the through the teacher, for example? Ahsantum, thank you very much. Ahsantum, thank you very much. Very good questions. Regarding awakeness and what are the signs of being awake <coughs> uh, different things can be said but maybe one substantial thing is this if we are awake we would see ourselves in the middle of a journey either at the beginning or you know uh, in the I don't know how uh, we have done half of it or you know most of it but we are in the journey as soon as someone is thinking that I am happy with what I have I wish everyone was like me I have reached my end of potentials This means that we have gone to a sleep. We are not awake. We are not alert. Uh, In you know one of the lectures, I said that spirituality is a current. It never ends. You are a musafir, and you remain always as a traveler, as a musafir. Those who forget and then get busy in that station that they are and enjoy and say, Alhamdulillah, compared to the previous stations, you know, I made progress and he's happy with this. He doesn't see the rest of the journey. This person is not awake. And since this journey is not uh, physical, this journey is in spirit. So it means that you must be aware of some of your faults, some of your problems. You must be aware of where you need to improve. If we are not aware of where we are improved, means we are heedless. Because definitely all of us have areas that we have to improve. And those who go higher, they are uh, least satisfied. (laughs) Yeah, Because when you go higher, you can see your problems more. You can see what is lacking more. A student after one year of a study, you know, there's a, a famous saying that say, for example, someone who goes uh, for a studying, first they think they are prophet. 
It's not, of course, happening, but as an exaggeration. First, they think they are prophet. Then they think, for example, they are imam. Then they think they are like marja taqlid. Then they think they are a great alim. After a few years, it's, you know, I'm just a talib. Not because they haven't learned. No, actually, because they have learned, they know how limited their knowledge is. Those who have not learned, with learning few things, they think they learned everything. But when you explore the ocean of knowledge, even if you gain a lot, you know how much you lack. So those who are higher in spirituality, they are more critical of themselves. They are least satisfied about themselves. Not to the extent that become despaired, but they are very critical of themselves, very unhappy about themselves. So these are some signs <laughs> that can help us. When we are pleased, when or we are satisfied, or we think I cannot do anything better, this is a problem. This means we are heedless. Regarding the second question, when we say, whoever acts upon what he knows, man amila bima ya'alam, or similar wordings, or I think Elm in this context means practical knowledge. It is true that a person who is muttaqi, Allah would help him even with understanding theoretical subjects. Even for example a student or a professor or researcher who is studying maths, physics, I don't know, chemistry, if they are muttaqi, Allah will help, will help them even with their secular subjects or in religious studies with theoretical subjects. For example, he's studying logic, philosophy, Allah will help them. But the main knowledge that we expect to gain through mujahada and through practice is the knowledge about what I should do the next. What are my next steps? You keep receiving guidance from Allah about how to continue. And this is very clear in this ayah. Alladina jahadu fina la nahdiannahum subulana. You will certainly guide them to our ways. So you want to move. You need a way to be known so that you can embark on the journey and go towards your destinations. So practical knowledge is very important. Otherwise, for example, if I keep just you know increasing <laughs> my knowledge of theoretical subjects, it's not enough. That can happen, but the main thing is that I should understand better my duties as a father, as a brother, as a son, as a sheikh, as a neighbor, as a colleague, and then in my journey, uh, what in this stage I should do, how I can fix my problems and go, go one a step further. These are the types of knowledge that Allah would give to one who practices. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. We have one written question from Shaykhana. Shukran for another practical lecture on spiritual way of fearing. I have a question. If you are trying to be on this journey, yes. doing your wajibat, uh, trying to avoid haram, doing mustahabat, uh, doing more uh, aqaba and muhasaba, uh, but if you live with your family members, spouse, siblings who are negligent of religion, they are not interested in religion or spirituality, how do you progress on this journey? What if their negligence or heedlessness also affects your progress? If you want to do nahi an munkar an amr bil ma'roof, but you know this will damage the harmony in the family as others are not interested in religion or spirituality. Is it right to keep off for sake of Allah to maintain the harmony? 
Yeah, there are some times issues that we need to address. You know, for example, if someone is really going to the right direction, we need to find a way to correct them. Maybe by talking, maybe by other means, but sometimes we cannot ignore. But most of the things we have to ignore. Most of the things which are not very critical, you have to ignore. Ignore in this sense, not that you don't pay attention. In the sense that you don't react. You keep in mind, you pray and try with patience, with good example of you. What you do, change them. Maybe your husband, maybe your wife, for example, uh, is not very spiritual. You cannot fight over spirituality. You cannot keep giving lectures, you know, to them. If they are not interested, you know, this will make them even, you know, more, uh, you know, uh, kind of confrontational or more, you know, defensive. You have to be patient. You have to understand their level. You have to see what makes them happy, keep them happy. Then if they see you are a person who is making efforts to make them happy, then they also little by little, they say to themselves, why, you know, I shouldn't try his way of life or her way of life. Why I should not you know, be like this person? So with this, you have to uh, engage them in a spirituality, not with uh, correcting and criticizing and even lecturing and preaching too much. It's very difficult. On the one hand, you shouldn't lose your own uh, direction and you should not also feel you are not responsible for others but on the other hand you should know that many times there is no quick solution you need to be patient you need to pray and inshallah there will be some opening alhamdulillah that's it uh, from our side sheikh and maybe we conclude with dua inshallah, inshallah. bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طبيلا وامن علينا برضا وهب لنا رأفته ورحمته ودعاءه وخيره اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم اقض حوائجنا اللهم ادع عنا الدين واغننا من الفقر برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى مي الله ان شاء الله bless you and support you and help you in every step of this journey ان شاء الله التماس دعاء please Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much.